incredibly a young lady that with great personality great perseverance and she has overcome so much to become one of the area's top players i think especially on the defensive side of the basketball but by golly can she score it as well eb let's make room and make way for the barty party lauren barton joins us here on the power hour what's up there barty hey Good to see you. Don't be scared. Don't be nervous. It's going to be all right. Uh, EB, I, I want you to stick around for this because I know there, there are a few that know Lauren Barton as well as you do. So I'll start the questioning here. Lauren, for you, this has been a year probably unlike any other. Your senior year seems to always go by in the blink of an eye. What has this season, what has this year been like to you up until late February here? Um. Yeah, it's been really fast. It's... um. Don't take for granted because everyone says it's going fast. It's going to go fast, and it really does go really fast. Um, this just like the environment and everything. I'm going to miss it so much. Have you been able to kind of encapsulate or take pictures in your mind of, of some of the moments that you've had your senior year? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, just like doing stuff with the teams, like even soccer, basketball, like. When we do the team bonding, like that's something you'll never forget. And it's just so great to have that experience. One of your former coaches, uh, of course, uh, you know, right here next to us. EB, what questions do you have for, for the Barty Party? Ah, uh, for Barty Party. <laughs> it's, it's tough because I see, I see low quite often. And uh, hold one second. I live right next to the fire station, so you're going to hear a fire truck more than likely. But um, I guess word is, well, you're probably the second best athlete. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. We are good. So the so word is, you're probably the second best athlete in your house, next to Greg, naturally. Oh. <laughs> it's definitely not your mom. We all know that. Um, yeah, sure. with that being said, you, you always have little eyes watching you, you know, Greg, especially, but you're, you're a huge role model to a lot of her classmates and those younger, those younger girls. And you do a great job, you, you know, just with all them, you, you know, how important is it, is it to you to be a role model, not only to Greg, but all her other friends, you know, kind of keep, you know, the Salem tradition going and, and just, you know, kind of leading the way for what they want to be too. Yeah, um, that's a big part in like what I love doing. I love the little kids and just like knowing that they look up to you because one day that's what they're going to be doing. It's just so special to me because they love the sport just as much as I do. And just having them look up to like me, I just it just makes you feel special. Like I know I make them feel special, but Little do they know, they actually make me feel, like, really special, especially all their support. They're at all my games, and it just feels so good to know that the little eyes are always there to see what, like, we do as a team and individually. They're always watching us, so. So you, you talk about little eyes, but we hear little mouths whenever we're watching YSN. Every time there's a free throw, you hear, shot. Can you, can you give us any insight as to who that might be and, and why they might be yelling that? Um, that is my little sister, Gray. Um, she's been doing that for a while now. Um, it, it's the funniest thing because it always, like, works everyone up. And, I mean, she's only eight, but she's my biggest fan. She never stops cheering for me. And... Every free throw, it's always been shot. I don't know where she learned it or why she started doing it, but I, it's great. Everyone loves it. So, I'm excited from, from a standpoint of being able to watch you kind of grow into the role that you're in right now. I was able to watch the Springfield game, and like we talked about in the after-game interview, the, post, the press conference, um, you are able to hold up the team when teams focus in on Riley or Fleck or, um, you know, your other teammates. You're able to kind of shore that burden. You have a, almost a, an engine that doesn't quit, but you also always get up. And I don't know if you're a Steeler fan or not, but you remind me a lot of Heinz Ward because you're always smiling 
no matter what. What is it about that engine that keeps going? And why do you always get up and smile? Is it to to bother the, the opposition or is it just to pump up your teammates? Um, well, like the old coaching stuff says, like always flirt with the refs. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> that we have, but um, everyone always says that. I mean, I'm always smiling. It's just like, cause you just kind of have to have fun with it because you only have like one high school career. Oh, we might've lost her. And if you don't doing it, if you're too hard on yourself. So, I mean, <laughs> Bailey always gets on me too. If I don't have fun, it's yeah. <laughs> what is what are I guess now that we have both you in the room and this is not rehearsed, what are some of the things that EB's been able to bring to your game and just to, to be able to help you out with maybe in, in life in general? Um Bailey's a big role model for me. He has taught me so much with basketball and just like everything in general like he's technically like my boss i mean he i work for him every weekend for youth basketball games and i mean he's always there like if he sees something wrong with my shot during the game he'll text my mom and my mom will yell from the stands and be like bailey said fix your feet and bailey said flirt with the refs like just like gets me out of my head i don't know he's always there though he knows how to like fix what I'm doing wrong. So EB from your standpoint, where has Lauren grown the most over the last few years? That's tough. I mean, <clears throat> low to me is probably the definition of the process. Um, I just see what she did her freshman year to where, you, you know, she came in and she's spent some time on JV and then sophomore year, it might've been the biggest transition for her because she had some of her, her classmates, her teammates kind of jump up and, and see a lot more varsity time. And, and she was kind of in a limbo. And, and I remember telling her, I was like, well, you know, you're going to take this role and it's going to be probably the best thing for you because it's going to, it, it's really going to strengthen up your offense. It's going to, you know, help you with some leadership roles. And, and she really took it, you know, full force. And then last year, you know, she went from not starting the first couple of games to, you know, ultimately starting. And it's not that the the person that she jumped ever did anything to lose the job. It's just, you know, what Lo was doing at the time, you couldn't take anything away from her with that. And now you have, you know, a senior year where you lose a, a pretty good senior class and you have a lot of different things changing. You know, you, you went from one coaching staff to the next and, you know, fortunately, she can sit there and say that she's been under some great coaches, you, you know, with what Coach Hamilton did and, and the success the past couple of years. And then you have a Coach Miller come in who's a 300-win coach. And, and, you know, it was one of those things I think they just had to find their footing. And now, you know, Lowe's role changed this year because last year all eyes were always generally on Abby, Riley, Cammy. You throw in a Zoe Reed and some others, and, and now her role changes because she's the, the number two or, or three scorer. So, it, you know, when I think of Lo, she always adapts to what's needed of her, but she's always an all-star in what that role is. You, you know, whether it's scoring 12, 15, 17 points or, you know, I think I took a picture of it. My favorite thing was when they played Boardman, just her and Mackenzie going at it. You, you know, to me, that was, you, you know, I was thinking back to July where those two actually shared the court together as teammates. And now they just get to go one-on-one. -on -one. And it's a definition of, you know, iron sharpens iron, you know, I guess, low with that being said, since you are my definition of the process, it, you know, what would be your message to others or whether it's your teammates or, or people who are in that same role as you right now, kind of looking for the way to, you know, trusting the process and where it's going to get um i always say like i bring it up at practice all the time because the jv always gets like upset or not like necessarily upset but like they don't feel like i don't know how to explain it but like when they're playing defense on us i always tell them that it's just gonna make them better because one day that was like what i was doing i was the one playing dummy defense almost you would want to say on our varsity girls like 
you're making them better, but at the same time, it's making you so much better because you're playing against like the girls that are going against other varsity teams. And I always just tell them that they have to have confidence and being on JV isn't a bad thing because that really does help build your confidence and it helps you be like, create like your inner player. Like you have to know what you can and can't do. And like showing that at practice, like I was never afraid to go at the varsity girls when we were on offense against their defense. Like you just have to kind of have confidence in yourself. And I tell Samson all the time, Carly, she's going to be a great player. She just has to find her confidence. And I tell her that being on JV, like, that was me. I was in the same spot as her. Like, just keep playing your game, and you'll get to where you want to be. What stands out to me, Lo, is the fact that you're you're a player that, you know – for the most part, people looked to or looked over in the early part of your career and said, okay, well, that's just a role player. We don't really necessarily have to watch her on tape, but you've stepped into this almost star player category for the Quakers. And 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 I think the better question isn't how did you do that is what have you learned that you can apply to your life, given the situations that you've been through, the adversity that you've gone through, how do you take what you've learned in basketball and apply it in the future or in the present as to, you know, being able to go through these situations and not always being given, you know, and, and have the red carpet rolled out for you, but kind of brick by brick building up who you are in, in your brand. Yeah. You just always have to be yourself. I mean, I never put on a, fake face to be someone I wasn't and I feel like that just really helps like not only in basketball but like in everything it especially helps your leadership because if you are if you're like trying to be something that you aren't and uh, being a leader at the same time you're showing someone to be some someone that looks up to you you're showing them something that you really aren't so I feel like you just always have to be yourself and like you have to make it fun like not everything in life has to be so serious so like just like in everything not just sports you have to make everything fun so it's not miserable to go through who are some of the, the leaders and role models that you look up to maybe on the floor and off the floor um i definitely look like last year for sure i looked up to abby and cammy they i wish i had cammy's height and i wish <laughs> I wish I had Abby's um, ball skills, but I look up to those two so much just because they made last year so much fun, but they were also so good at what they did. And it was just, it came naturally to them. Um, I love how they play, both of them. And they always pushed me to be better last year. And I think that really helped me this year. And outside of basketball, I really look up to... Um, probably my mom, just because she's so, like, no matter how much me and her fight, because <laughs> we're so close, um, she definitely does life the right way. She is successful, and she has me and Gray, and we're happy. So I look up to her, and I want to be a good mom like her someday. That's awesome. EB, you got anything else for Lo? Uh, I think I was just trying to butter up her mom to get some new shoes or something. That's, that's about it. <laughs> um, the only thing I got love is like you're you're kind of in a unique situation. You're you're you've been a part of a program. You've been to three district titles, and and we all went to breakfast last week, and and we kind of you know we didn't talk about basketball this year or last year, but it, it was just you guys got to kind of just hang out and chill, and and you know it was just good to reconnect with you guys. Um, you know, with it being your senior year, first would be what would it mean to make a fourth district title? You know, because it's tournament time, you're one and done, nothing's guaranteed now, you know, but you know what that path is and what it takes to get there. So, what would it be to make the fourth? And, you know, I guess your past experiences, what of those past experiences do you think? will help you get to that point or to that fourth district, you know, title, you, you know, it's kind of an expectation for you guys. So if you can get there and I very well you can that again, but like you have the, you have the pedigree, you know, how are these past experiences going to help you get to that point? Um, 
even though I didn't play in all of those games, um, I was there cheering for my teammates. So I just know that to get there, it would mean so much to our seniors because this year hasn't like, we haven't had like the same winning season, but we've definitely still had fun and we've like tried to make the best out of it. But really, like if we got there, it would just mean like so much to us. And I know that um, we're going to work our butts off to get there. So um, past experiences from getting to getting there, we know we have to work hard at practice and we just have to keep bringing it and really like staying together as a team. We can't let our team chemistry like fall apart. Like it gets hard because it's such a long season, but we can't let that affect like how our team bonds and everything. So just staying together as a team. All right, a couple more questions. Lauren Barton, the Barty Party. Uh, so from, from your standpoint, you're going to get a, a certificate here in a couple months that says you met all the requirements set forth by Salem High School. Ultimately, Lauren, what do you want to do? What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do? Do you want to play at the next level? Um, you've got a great opportunity here this, with this platform to, to tell coaches what they'd be getting with you. Uh, and what do you want to study? And, and what ultimately do you want to, uh, to, to put your stock into and doing for the rest of your life, or at least for some time? Um, I want to go to Mount. That's where I want to go to college. Um, I want to be a nurse when I'm older. It's always been my dream to work in the medical field and help others. I'm big on that. Um, just like, I don't know. That's always been like one of the things I always try to do is like help out others out no matter like who they are, what they come from, because like you never know who needs help. And um, I've thought about playing at the next level. Um, I've talked to Cami, Abby, Zoe, um, me and Rye. We both were, it's so like hard to make the decision. But um, yeah, I've definitely looked into softball and basketball at the next level. But yeah, just really like making myself successful in my next in the next level is just my main goal. EB, is it any surprise to you that this young lady wants to help out people for the rest of her life? No, because um, she can't be a scorekeeper for me the rest of her life. Um, <laughs> you know, one, it's not going to pay many bills. It's great for high school kids and college kids now. So I'll hold on to her for a couple more years. Uh, the work ethic is something you never really have to um, question about. Well, uh, you know, now uh, a lot of people would sit there and say her and I probably fight like brother and sister. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's in pictures somewhere where we were saying some choice words and then afterwards it, it's all up. But that's just that's the type of person she 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 is. You know, she wants to compete and she understands that, you know, being held accountable is part of that process. But helping people, that it's kind of in her blood. I, I mean, if many people get to see her on the court and that competitive nature, but if you wanted to see, you know, who she is as a human, you just got to look at her off the court now. She is not only with her, her sisters, but her sister friends and, you know, Ultimately, all these other little girls and boys that are in, you know, the elementary schools and how she just interacts with them, you know, it would not, uh, you know, well, being a nurse, it's either because she wants to stab people with needles or it's because she's made to help people. And she, she's one of the people in the world that, you know, she's she's destined to help others. Hello to hear that from from one of your uh, well, one of your bosses, but certainly one of your coaches. What does that mean to you? Um, it just means so much to see that, like, he like that he knows and he can tell people that I'm not, like, if you know me off the court, I'm not as feisty as I am when I'm on the court. It just, like, to be able to tell people that, I mean, that just feels good. All right, last question for you because I got to ask this. Why – and, and we got to pull up full screen because why the heck does it look like you've got like three lockers? Like are you – are you have you become that important in the Salem locker room that you've got three lockers and one of them looks like it, it got just threw up the year 2000? <laughs> so I have – we each have 
a lot of, like, I can show you. Okay, All right, so yeah. these are the scenes. Make sure, hey, make sure there's nobody, like, in the locker room, though. There's nobody here. It's just okay. me. <laughs> so these are the senior lockers. Um, They actually decorated for us for senior night. And we never took it down. And our parents also helped out with that. Um, We each have a star on our locker that says our name. So I'm between the two Rileys. So I have my L and then my two R's beside, beside me. And... It just, they like really decked out the locker room this year. We have a bunch of hanging lights and stuff. And there's red and black stuff hanging from the ceiling, basketballs. Um, but yeah, we have one, two, three, four. <laughs> we have seven lockers that we all share. So. Seven <laughs> lockers, EB. That, I mean, they're, it's a new age in Salem. Yeah. Where Here, here's, here's my question. You're probably going to put someone on blast. I probably know the answer. Whose locker smells the worst? Riley Hutton. Hundred <laughs> percent. Her locker right now. I won't embarrass her, but her locker is. I don't know what she would call it. Not good. No. I mean, Flick has about five pairs of basketball shoes in hers. Riley takes hers home every day. I have two up in mine. Well, thank God Riley takes hers home because if yeah, you ever smell that girl be. shoes, <laughs> man. I'm not into smelling girl shoes, EB, but good on you, buddy. Good uh, on I, you, coach. I also got it by default. It, it's, <laughs> you know, look, I, I, I was with Riley for three years, and you tape that girl's ankles. It's I, I needed I needed like a chem suit sometimes after. <laughs> Lauren Barton, the Barty Party forever. We are in your debt. Thank you so much for for all the great memories. Thank you for all the great times and the great smiles. Uh, We wish you nothing but the best. Thank you for stopping by the Power Hour today. Lauren Barton, everybody. Thank you for having me. You got it, kiddo. There she goes. The Barty Party. EB, I mean, we can talk. I could have talked to her for the entire hour. She never stops smiling. She always gives it straight. She's never going to sugarcoat it. For someone like that, I mean, there's you were you were a worker workhorse. I was a workhorse in high school. You and I kind of kind of had to not that we didn't have talent, but we had to work extra hard because of kind of our size and and you know there were guys and well there were guys with a lot more talent than what we had. When you coach a young lady like Lauren Barton who has talent, but you just have to kind of work harder to kind of polish it what does that show you as a coach what does that show you to future players that you're coaching along the way that all things are possible if you put the work in i I mean and i touched on it earlier like low is the definition of the process you know going into her sophomore year especially you know it was a big year for her and her and i had multiple discussions and i think it was a summer going into it where you know i point blank just told her i was like well you know I don't want you to focus on the now, but look at the big picture and, and, you know, two or three years down the road from now, where you're going to be. And, and she's, everyone knows now, and it's not just the past couple of years, but, you know, this year, she's a pivotal part of that program. You, you know, she's the energy. She's kind of like, you know what you get. Riley Hutton is a freak of an athlete and a heck of a player. And a lot of eyes are on her, but then, you, you know, low kind of turns into the the engine for him, and it's it's one of those things to where is she the tallest? No, she'll she'll admit that. You know, she wants Cami e. Rome's height. You know, and she wants you know Abby Davidson's handles and and this and that. But she's she's always going to give you a ton of heart. She's going to give you a ton of energy, and it's those intangibles that you know you can't replace. Those are the things you can't teach. You know. There is one thing that I can guarantee that every, no matter the sport, whether it was soccer, basketball, softball, she, she's going to come out and give her all and she's going to compete. Like she's a high level competitor. And I think when you have those athletes and you look at it as a coach that outweighs a lot of, you you know, natural talents sometimes, you know, at the end of the game, do you want the person who's going to go, you know, put their body on the line, anything to do to get the win, or do you, you know, and maybe they're not as talented, but <clears throat> over the person who has more natural talent, but they're just going to go through the motions, you know, that's where I will give Lil all the credit, you know, 
she will always do whatever it takes and you know literally put her body on the line or she's the one that will dive for the loose balls take the charges you know she's five three if you're six two she's she's like the little puppy who thinks she's actually you know a, a german shepherd and you can't tell her any any different and i think just that heart tenacity and determination you know makes up for you know a lot of things in athletes and as a coach when you see that you know that gets you excited just because you know you know what you got and no matter what you know the hands dealt you know you're going to